As we do get more details on that, of course, we will bring those to you here on Live Now from Fox. Do want to get to the latest out of a story we have been following all throughout the morning here. You're taking a live look over at what appears to be the Israel-Lebanon border there. Iran vowing revenge against Israel for the assassination of the Hamas terror group's leader. Iran confirming that Ismail Haniya killed in a strike in Tehran earlier today, and he was there for the inauguration of Iran's new president. However, Israel has not claimed responsibility for that attack. However, hours earlier, the Israeli military says it did conduct an airstrike in Lebanon's capital of Beirut, killing Hezbollah's most senior military commander. Second in command of the terror group, he was the man responsible for this weekend's attack in the Golan Heights that killed 12 children. I do want to talk more about all of this here, so let's bring in David Menser, the Israeli government spokesperson. We, of course, air his briefings every day on Live Now from Fox, and he joins us now live to discuss the latest developments. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to be here with us, David. It's a pleasure to be with you again, Josh. All right, so first off, the big question here, and I know you can only say so much, but Israel, are they claiming responsibility for this attack that did kill the head of Hamas? So I can't comment on that particular uh, incident, uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, one of the, we have three main war aims uh, here in Israel against this genocidal murderous organization of Hamas and their terror army. Uh, the three war aims, as you've probably heard me say many, many times, are of course to destroy Hamas, to make sure that we get rid of their military and their governing capabilities, to bring back our 155 uh, 115 hostages. You know, tomorrow it will be 300 days that they are in the Hamas uh, terror dungeons. Don't forget as well, tomorrow it's the fifth birthday of uh, Ariel Bibas, that red-headed boy which has become a symbol of all the hostages. Imagine uh, spending the last 10 months of your life as a five-year-old in the Hamas terror dungeons. And of course, the third, op the third um, objective of this war is to make sure that Gaza never again is able to pose a threat to us. Those are our three war aims, and that is what I can share to you, is the objective of this government for which it has overwhelming support in this country. Tell me about Hania and, and who he was, because I know that Israel does have uh, many comments, many statements that have been made just about him as, as a person. So can you kind of break down for me where Israel stands? So I can't mention, I can't uh, talk about that incident uh, in particular, but uh, I would just encourage your uh, viewers to just Google Ismail Hania and watch him praise terrorists watch him uh, call for the killing of Jews, watch him uh, call for the sacrifice of Gazans, uh, for saying that uh, Gazans are the best, are the best at sacrificing themselves. Uh, watch him uh, call for its genocidal jihadi uh, attacks against uh, Israel's people. He's done this for decades and decades. Uh, he was a, a brutal terrorist uh, leader. Um, and uh, in some of the media, I've just come off the BBC and they've been talking about him as a pragmatist and as a reformer. This man was a dastardly terrorist. Uh, there is footage of him watching the, foot, watching the October the 7th massacre with a huge smile on his face. We know that this man directed the October 7th massacres, uh, which the Hamas Iranian terrorist army uh, put against our people and we know exactly who he is and no matter uh, how hard uh, global media tries to rehabilitate him uh, this man was a brutal terrorist killer and that's of a matter of public record I do want to pop up this image right here that we do have. This is actually coming in out of Beirut. And I want to ask you about the second in command, so to speak, of Hezbollah, because does that send a message to the group? We know that Israel has claimed responsibility for the attack that did kill uh, the second in command. So what sort of message does that send? <laughs> Look, yesterday, Josh, I spoke to you from Migdal Shamsh, uh, the Druze village uh, in northern Israel, uh, and I described to you there a, a, a soccer pitch with uh, a white uh, crater 
where the uh, Hezbollah rocket landed, killing 12 young people. Uh, they were playing soccer at 6.18 p.m. when a Hamas rocket uh, rained down from Lebanon uh, into this northern Israeli village and took their lives. Uh, the images which will stay with me for the rest of my life are of this innocent uh, soccer pitch of uh, bicycles, children's bicycles burnt and blackened, um, of the, the fence around the soccer pitch uh, bent back and blackened, uh, bent back like a tin of tuna, and also the terrible uh, faces of the families of these 12 children, uh, together with the mayor of Magdal Shams, the Druze mayor of the Magdal Shams, who I uh, had the honor to speak to yesterday. Look, this is not a sustainable reality. The terrorist who we eliminated last night, uh, sitting comfortably in his home in Beirut, he was a brutal genocidal terrorist. He was the number two in uh, the uh, Hezbollah Iranian uh, killer army. And he was also not only didn't he not only did he have uh, lots of Jewish blood uh, on his hands, he also had the blood of 241 US Marines that were killed in uh, Lebanon when Hezbollah attacked that is that uh, US army base. In indeed, uh, that was in 1983. Indeed, the American uh, government, uh, for him, he's on the list of most wanted terrorists, and he had a bounty of five million US dollars on his head. So look, we're being fought by Iran here. Uh, no one should be in any, any doubt that Hezbollah are a unit of the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard, the Iranian Islamic Evolu Revolutionary Guard. The Iranian infiltration of Lebanon has made it a failed state, uh, but ultimately Lebanon is of course responsible for these attacks as well. We have to stand up to them. This is no longer a sustainable reality that 12 children get blown to bits, literally to bits, uh, on a soccer pitch in northern Israel. Uh, we need to protect these people. They're not Jews, they're, they're, they're Jewish people, they're Druze. Uh, they're very dear to our hearts. They're honored citizens of this country. And uh, also, you know, we've got about 80,000 of Israel's people who are displaced, displaced by over 7,000 Hezbollah rockets. We need to get those people home. We need to fight against this uh, uh, Hezbollah terrorist army and we will be successful. And last night was a big step towards that. And I know, again, you can't really go into specifics here, but I've asked you this question pretty much every time that I talk to you. Is Israel closer to going into a full-out war with Hezbollah? Because we've seen the attacks happening on northern Israel time and time again. I believe at least one person uh, was killed yesterday as a result. So are, I guess, you any closer to a war with Hezbollah? Look, one way or another, whether through diplomacy or through uh, other means, we will secure our northern border. It's our duty. It's our duty as a government. Uh, we'd be remiss if we allowed this terrorist outrage to remain uh, on, our, on our northern border. Uh, it's the subject of UN Security Council Resolution 1559, which has never been adhered to. It's the subject of uh, UN Security Re Re Resolution 1701, which has never been uh, adhered to. You know, Lebanon is a failed state. Uh, they allow this uh, Iranian Hezbollah army to occupy their south. Uh, they're constantly firing rockets at us. You know, there's this useless UNIFIL force, a United Nations force, which was put there to make ensure that uh, Hezbollah were not close to our border. They should be pushed behind the Litani River. That too has been a farce, nothing but a farce. They're absolutely useless, that UN force. We're being attacked by this Hezbollah. We would always prefer diplomacy.